Hello, Louise Mathias, multidisciplinary barrister, um, advanced chain mediator and FDRP. I'm also a certified high performance and emotional intelligence and daring leadership um, method coach and consultant. Criticism uh, that can lead to rejection is a topic that's very personal to me. It's something that I really struggled with and carried with me from childhood for many years throughout my life. And that was because of childhood trauma. So I've had lots of rejection um, in uh, life, earlier life, and I've had tons of rejection in law, more than the previous 30 years of my life. So I'm very well equipped to help you to understand um, the reasons behind um, rejection and how you can successfully deal with rejection. And at the outset, um, I want to be really clear that I'm not talking about shutting down constructive feedback. All of us need to be able to take on constructive feedback um, from people that we trust and know, well, maybe we've got blind spots. We can't see our personality flaws or we you know, may need to upgrade our mindset or we may need to upgrade the way we interact with other people. These are ways that we can continue to grow and see the world from other people's perspective as well. So I'm not trying to shut that down, but I'm trying to show the difference between constructive and destructive criticism that leads to uh, rejection. Because people can only reject us for um, maybe how we behave, how we interact, what we say, what we think, but they can't um, reject us for who we truly are as a person, our core humanity, our core humanness. So when we feel rejected, we all deal with it in different ways. But when you um, are rejected, do you take an in inventory and you know look at, well, is there something that I'm doing, saying, thinking that needs to be um, upgraded? Am I missing something? Do I have to adjust something, fine tune something, update, upskill, if something in particular is pe causing people to reject me? Is there a problem in me? Um, how do you feel? Does it, when you're rejected, do you automatically think, I'm unworthy, I'm unlikable, I'm not good enough, I don't have the talent, skills or abilities, and you gather this as evidence to support your existing beliefs, your self-doubts, or are you making assumptions that you're being rejected based on what you think other people are um, thinking or feeling about you? You don't really know because you've not had that conversation. When you get rejected, do you feel angry? Do you feel hurt? Well, it's very normal. Does it then turn into self-loathing? Or do you go the other way and you start to lash out at other people? When you are your harshest inner critic, when you are rejected, it just puts that inner critic's voice even louder. And then you start to speak in absolutes, like they don't think I'm good enough. I'm a failure, I'll never be successful, I'll never succeed, I'll never be good at this. Very absolute thinking and speaking to yourself internally. And then you think this is just the beginning of the snowball effect that's gonna have on my reputation, everything's gonna be ruined, um, my business will never succeed. And you end, you end up changing the way that you view yourself and how you think about yourself. And then you also end up changing the way you do everything because you're so um, transfixed, fixated on fear of what others will think and whether you're going to be rejected again, that your true unique self is buried and you don't show up as who you truly are. Why? Because are you assuming? And what's your perspective about being rejected? The truth is when you don't feel good about yourself, you have self-doubts you have imposter syndrome, you don't have confidence in yourself, any rejection or lack of approval is going to be amplified a hundred times. I know because in my earlier life, before I did a mindset upgrade in my early 30s, that's how I felt. Now, rejection is nothing more than a minor headache. I'm very introspective, so I always take an inventory as to what I'm doing, so I'm always trying to readjust and adjust. But if it's somebody else rejecting me, it just, as I said, becomes a minor headache for me. If it is, I see it is uh, more of coming from their angle when they don't really, not really aware of who I am or what I, what I stand for. 
So instead of being this gaping, oozing wound that it used to be, it's just a minor inconvenient headache. It doesn't cripple me anymore. And how that has been possible is because I've upgraded my mindset, my skills, my performance, and so that I can show up authentically how, whether people like me or not. Because I believe that what I have to offer, what I have to bring, my skills, my abilities, my talents are worth, are valuable. And I'm not going to stop offering them to the world, to the profession, because people will criticise me. Yes, they will criticise me. It's a given. But as Aristotle said, criticism is something we can avoid easily by saying nothing, doing nothing and being nothing. I'm not prepared to live like that, are you? Rejection doesn't mean you're not good enough. It may, it may mean that that other person or those people or group of people may fail to notice what you have to offer, your unique skills, talents and abilities. For me, I have too much to offer, and that's not said out of arrogance, but I've worked re really hard to up skills, and I know what I can bring. I know the service and how I want to serve others. I won't be stopped because of fear of what other people may think. Successful people aren't born with easy lives. They just don't associate long-term with rejection, obstacles, or fear. I'm gonna share with you three more reasons why rejection is just redirection. Understanding what causes people to criticise or ultimately reject you will take the sting out of it. And it's really often, it's never really about you. It's about uh, often about what you do, may be doing or maybe even more aligned with other people's insecurities and what's happening in their life. So I look forward to speaking with you again in the next series.